Hello Anchorage and welcome to Assembly 101. In this video, we're going to talk all about ordinances. We'll see how an idea turns into a proposed ordinance, which is then voted on by the Anchorage Assembly. In the second half of our video, we're going to walk through an example ordinance step by step. An ordinance is a law passed by local government. When the Assembly passes ordinances, they are changing municipal law and the Anchorage Municipal Code. But how does an idea get to the point where it is presented to and voted on by the Assembly? First, an idea is brought to the attention of the community. Concerned citizens may come together and agree that something should be done or changed in their neighborhood. Channels for initial discussion may be a community council meeting or through boards and commissions or simply between neighbors and local groups. For information on how to contact your community council, go to communitycouncils.org. You can also locate more information about boards and commissions on the municipal webpage. After the idea is discussed by individuals or community groups, an ordinance is drafted. The proposed ordinance is introduced in writing to the assembly at a regular meeting or a special meeting by the assembly members or the mayor. For complex issues, assembly work sessions are held. At these work sessions, there may be presentations by the administration or departments that may be Im impacted by the proposed change, as well as discussion by the assembly members. These meetings are open to the public, but there is no public testimony. An assembly memorandum is submitted for each ordinance. Abbreviated AM, an assembly memorandum is often a really good place to start when trying to figure out what an ordinance contains. They explain in plain terms what the ordinance will change and are often easier to read than the dense legal text of the ordinance itself. Community members are made aware of the issue by a formal public notice, but may also hear about it at community council meetings or other groups that regularly interact with the assembly. Public hearings are held during assembly meetings and are also an opportunity for individuals to voice their concerns. If assembly members wish to make changes to the proposed ordinance, amendments are submitted and then voted on. If there are updates, a substitute S version of the ordinance is made. The updated version will have an S in parentheses following the identification number. If significant changes are made, an updated memorandum will explain them. If it receives a majority of assembly member votes in favor, the ordinance is passed. The ordinance may take effect upon adoption or at a later date specified by the ordinance. In addition to other actions which require an ordinance, here are some examples of the uses for ordinances. Adopt or amend the administrative code. Levy taxes. Authorize borrowing of money. Grant, renew, or extend a franchise. Regulate the rate charged by a public utility. Establish a rule or regulation for the violation of which a fine or other penalty is imposed. Adopt or amend zoning or similar land use measures. Convey or lease or authorize the conveyance or lease of any interest in lands of the municipality. An emergency ordinance may be both introduced and adopted at the same meeting. This expedited process is outlined in code. It addresses issues that require immediate action or attention. An emergency ordinance expires automatically after 60 days or unless it is repealed by a resolution. Now that we know more about how ordinances are passed and what they can do, let's look at an example. We'll start by taking a look at the Assembly Memorandum. The Assembly Memorandum includes the date it was presented to the body, and the Assembly members who introduced it are located in the FROM section. The summary of the ordinance is in all caps as the memo's subject. It outlines the changes that were made to the amended S version and provides context for understanding the ordinance in plain English. After reading the AM, we get a general idea that the ordinance seeks to end the exclusion of electronic cigarettes and vaping products from the excise tax on tobacco products, and to update the code to reflect that change. The S version also included updates to definitions of certain terms. This ordinance also has an Assembly Information Memorandum, which reports information requested by the Assembly. In this case, the Anchorage Health Department provided additional findings and recommendations in support of the proposed ordinance. 
Now, looking at the ordinance itself, we see that the proposed ordinance was submitted by two assembly members, read at the October 27th meeting, and amended and approved on November 4th. The ordinance's identification number is 2020-89 with an S in parentheses, indicating the year the item was placed on the agenda and that it has been amended. Section 1 includes the specific updates to the code. Section 2 includes that electronic smoking devices sold to marijuana retail establishments are exempt from the tax under this chapter of the code. Section 3 mentions when the ordinance will take effect. Finally, the document bears the signature of the chair as well as the municipal clerk. Thank you for joining us for our Assembly 101 lesson. We hope you learned more about ordinances and the Anchorage Assembly's role in passing them. Be sure to check out our other Assembly 101 videos, tutorials, and more at muni.org.